Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that um, I have recently stated that I want to do a series of videos over here about addiction and recovery and that I want to start addressing addiction and recovery issues over here and on a regular basis just doing videos talking about everything to do with addiction and recovery. Um, but before I get into today's video, I want to say it's very, very important that I say this as well, right? That I am no expert when it comes to this, okay? I am only sharing my experience, strength, and hope. I am only sharing from the point of view of what I have learned as I have gone down this road of recovery. And I'm only sharing from my point of view. So I just want to share that with you guys um, so that people don't come over here and go, well, Peter said this and Peter said that. I am also no representative representative of any 12-step program. Like I said, I'm only speaking to my experience, okay? Um, just like I would hope that anybody else would only speak to their experience. So anything that I share over here, whether it's how to get through the holidays or how to deal with boredom in recovery or, you know, like early days in recovery or, you know, being an old timer in recovery or anything that we're going to talk about over here, I want you to know is only based on my experience, okay? Now, what I did do was um, I had asked in two separate videos recently for you guys to give me some topics of some things that you would like me to talk about over here. So I actually read through the comments, there were quite a few of you, thank you so much, um, that commented and said, I would really like to hear what you have to say about this or I would really like to hear what you have to say about that. If you were one of the people that commented, uh, stay tuned because you will probably get that video coming up here in the next week or two because I'm going to try to address all of those. Um, and if you're somebody that didn't see those videos and you have a specific topic about recovery or addiction that you would like me to talk about, please put it in the comment section below. And, and, and that being said, if there's any topic in my life that I have shared on my vlog or my Peter Does Stuff channel or over here, whether it's about addiction and recovery or my marriage or marriage counseling or grief dealing with my mom or with our dogs, um, you know, or anything in my life, social anxiety, body dysmorphia that I've struggled with, whatever it is that I have talked about in my videos, if there are specific things that you would like me to talk about relating to those or how to deal with those things, and like I've said in past videos, I'm not a perfect example of these things. I mean, these are things I'm still working on in my life today and probably always will. Um, you know, put it in the comment section below and, you know, say, hey, I relate to this too, or I don't really know a lot about this. Like, how could I, you know, let me know more about this or whatever. And I'm more than willing to do those videos. I really love to make videos on this channel uh, for people that, like, they're like, oh my God, that's what I needed to hear today. I get so many comments on this channel. I mean, I literally was just reading through the comments to make sure I hadn't missed any. And there were, like, three comments from just my last video. And I get this really on almost every video that I post over here. Which, let's just be honest, this is my least viewed vi channel, okay, of any channel that I do. But I love it, right? So it's not like I'm getting flooded with comments, but I got like three comments just on my last video where people were like, Peter, this was exactly what I needed to hear today. <laughs> well, speak to the universe about that because I'm just picking meditations to read typically, right? So anyway, um, I wanted to read this comment that I received and this is for Laura. So I'm going to edit part of it out because Laura said where she worked. But she said, hi, Peter. I've been watching you for years. And she said she worked at a rehab center. Um, I've shown your videos to the clients and they always love you. So thank you so much, Laura. I really appreciate that. She said the female clients are struggling with drama, negativity, and focusing on their recovery. Can you do a video on this? And partly why I picked this as the first video to do is because I think this is something that, well, first of all, it's not just a female issue. It's a male issue as well in recovery. Um, but I think it's something that people in recovery <laughs> struggle with for their entirety of the recovery. It's not just early recovery. It's not just later recovery. It can be a distraction technique for whatever point of your recovery that you're in, you know? And I was kind of like, I read the comment last night when I was laying in bed and I was like, couldn't sleep last night. So I got up and I looked through my phone and then I, and I, don't, I don't ever usually do that. If you know me, you know that like when I put my phone away for the night, I put my phone away for the night. But I couldn't sleep last night. So I was kind of like reading through some comments and I was thinking about things and I, I was thinking about being in early sobriety, you know, and it's like, one of the things that I was told, and so much of what I share over here or what I repeat, are just things that 
um, I have heard from other people. They're just, it's just wisdom that was passed down to me that I hopefully pass on to other people. And you know, with these recovery videos, I hope that they're widespread enough. Like this one today is gonna be about growing up in chaos. I hope that they're widespread enough that even if you're not in recovery, even if you don't struggle with addiction, that there'll be a video that maybe on some level you relate to, you know? I think for me, you know, when I started really doing like evaluation of my life and looking at growing up with an alcoholic mother and different, you know, systems that I grew up with in my life, and even though my mother was an alcoholic, that wasn't the only <laughs> alcoholic that I had in my family. I mean, there was a lot of drinking in my, la in my life, you know? My cousin Caroline and I talked about that in a video that we did together. And so I grew up with a lot of chaos, a, a ton of chaos. In fact, chaos is where I'm comfortable. Negativity is where I'm comfortable. I'm not comfortable with calm, serene, peaceful. Today I am. Today I am because I've worked very, very hard on removing the negativity, removing the chaos, and realizing that that's not something that I need to have in my life, okay? But it's taken me a long, I mean, I'm 27 and a half years sober. It's taken me a long time to get there. When I first got sober, I, listen, I wanted to know who was dating who, who was kissing who, who was doing who in the car behind the, the meeting. I wanted to know what did, I was wanting to know all the business. I was wanting to know the chaos, okay? You know, I mean, that's where I was. I was like right up in the chaos of all of it because that's what I was comfortable with, right? You know, and I think like it's really important too that we remember that you know we talk about principles before pers or, uh, principles before personalities that when you're talking about people or you're gossiping about people or you're saying things behind their back right like really like who who are they as people in recovery what is it you want for them are you wanting the same things for them that you would want for yourself and i think that's where you know as a person in recovery like we stop gossiping about people in recovery and things like that because you wouldn't want it done about you and it's like you want to be that good role model for somebody else, right? But I will tell you, like for me, this is going to sound like such a crazy example. Um, and I don't know if it'll make sense to anybody out there. But like, if you've ever seen the movie, why can't I think of the movie what it's called now? <laughs> Shoot. A Girl Interrupted with Winona Ryder, right? And it's like she and Angelina Jolie live in complete chaos, okay? And they run that psych unit in complete chaos and they run away in complete chaos and negativity. It's com chaos and negativity, chaos and negativity, right? And then one day, Winona Ryder comes back and she realizes, and if you've watched a movie, it's like they do this music montage and she's like talking to this therapist and she's like getting better. And what she's realized is, I want something better for myself. I want a better life for myself, you know? And that's a true story. And I think that's what happened to me was that eventually I was like, you know, I mean, I think <laughs> for any of us when we go into treatment, like, you know, I tell a story, it's kind of a sad story at the end of it, but like when I was in treatment, like, I mean, those 30 people that I was in treatment with, I mean, we bonded. We bonded like nobody's business, right? Like I knew everybody I was in treatment with, right? I mean, I was kind of the quiet kid and all of that kind of stuff. And I was 22 and it was all older men. And then there was women on the women's unit and we would do like rec therapy and eat meals and stuff together and smoke cigarettes outside together and all that kind of stuff, right? and introduce each other to each. Well, I never had any visitors hardly in treatment, but like most of them would be like, Peter, come over here and sit. And they'd introduce me to their families and stuff like that. You know, and so there was a lot of that. There were relationships that were going on in recovery. Don't think we didn't know that. There were people that were using in treatment. We knew that, we knew who they were. You know, it was all of that kind of drama and negativity. But I think the day came and I remember when my counselor said to me, she said, you know, I've decided that like this is going to be your discharge day. And I was so terrified, right? And she goes, what are you scared of? And I said, I'm scared I can't make it. And she goes, I think that that's the perfect time for you to go. You know, that you need to be built with all of the foundation for you to be prepared to go, but scared enough that you might not make it. And I can remember at that point was when I was like, okay, you're not going to be in treatment forever. Like you need to pull this together. And you know, in today's day, that was when we did like 30 and 40 day treatment programs. 
In today's time, well now, back then it was six months, whatever. In today's time, it's like three days of detox into an outpatient program, move them out, move them out, move them out, move them out. Relapse, three days, if they're lucky and they have insurance, two to three days of a detox, move them into an outpatient program, move them out, move them out, move them out, right? So the most that people are getting in a treatment program to these days is two to three days in a treatment program and then they're in an outpatient or a halfway house and halfway houses have a lot of negativity and chaos too. But here's the thing. You have a choice. Do I engage in the negativity and the chaos? You know, I think one thing that's important to remember is like in my first year, like I got out of treatment and I got a boyfriend three days later, you know, and I didn't know who I was if I didn't have a boyfriend. I didn't know who I was if I didn't have somebody validating me. That relationship ended a week later I got in another relationship. When that relationship ended, my sponsor looked at me and he said, are you now ready to do it my way? Because relationships are not recommended in our first year of sobriety. And the reason for that is not because of this or because of that. It's because we don't have anything to give somebody, okay? And we're, I mean, we are such a mess in our first year of sobriety that we don't have anybody anything to give anybody else. The other reason why relationships aren't suggested for people in the first year of sobriety is it's such an amazing time to take for yourself to really get to know yourself and to figure out what you want in this world and to clean up the wreckage of your past and to start this foundation. Had I not gotten out of those two relationships and really started setting a strong foundation, which I already have been kind of doing anyway, but a strong foundation for my sobriety, I would not be here today. I would not have the amazing, cool life that I have today had I not set the foundation for my life 27 and a half years ago, period, in the story. If I wasn't going to meetings every day, if I didn't eventually get out of the drama and the negativity and realize that is not about me, don't dial up pain, I don't need to know what somebody else is doing is none of my business, I don't need to know who they're sleeping with. I don't need to know what they're using. I don't need to know all that kind of stuff. What I need to know about is, what is Peter doing today? Is Peter calling his sponsor? Did Peter go to a meeting today? Okay. Is Peter reading the basic text? Is Peter taking care of his right? That's what I needed to do because I can tell you down the road what I knew. And somebody said this to me was, okay. Somebody said some, two things to me that were so hard and so, I mean, when they said it to me, I just was like, I, I don't even, this was like one of my first sponsors. I was like, I don't even know what to do with that, but I look back on that and it's true. It's harsh, but it's true, okay? And that was, well, there's a couple of things. The first thing was, you aren't even gonna know these people in five years, okay? So you're spinning out of control and all of this negativity and chaos for people that aren't even gonna be in your life in five years, what for, okay? My battery died because I'd filmed two review videos previous to this, okay. So anyway, I was told several things um, in early sobriety, and they were really harsh things too, right? That there are going to be a lot of people that aren't going to make it. And why aren't they going to make it? Because their focus is not on their sobriety. Their focus is not on their sobriety being a priority in their life. And you have to make your, your sobriety a priority. You have to put it above your family and your friends and your love interests and all. You have to. Because the reality is, you don't have your family, you don't have your career, you don't have your love interest, you don't have that guy that's so cute that wants you so bad. You don't have any of that. You don't have the drama, the negativity, you don't have that girlfriend that would do anything for you. You don't have, you don't have that ride or die. You don't have any of that if you are not sober today, okay? Period, end of story. So you gotta take care of yourself. And the thing is, is that you've gotta love yourself enough, and this was the thing that is so hard, I think it's so hard to grasp, because we're, we're told that you have to love yourself enough. You know, I can remember like the coin that I got when I got out of treatment, said something on it like, I must first be a value to myself before I can be a value to somebody else. And then we went like around this like circle and everybody said positive things about me, right? And I can remember like, people said you have to love yourself first and you have to love yourself enough, and I thought, love myself at all like if I loved myself you think that I'd be doing the things that I'm doing to myself you think if I loved myself I'd be basically prostituting myself out that I would basically be putting myself in really sketchy scary situations you know with drug dealers and putting guns in my mouth I mean do you think that I would live in this kind of manner if I really loved myself I don't even know what that means I had no concept of what that meant right but I didn't have to because what I could do was put one foot in front of the other and just do what I was asked. 
And I wasn't asked to love myself, okay? I really wasn't. You know, what I was told was that there were people out there that would love me until I could love myself. And I'm thankful for that because I didn't love myself. I didn't even know who the hell I was, you know? I really didn't. I didn't, let alone like, I didn't like myself. And I didn't understand why anybody else would too. You know, when people wanted to hug me or hug on me or tell me that I was worth it or whatever, I was like, you don't, I was like, you don't know me. I'm trash. Like, you don't, you don't know me. Because if you knew me, if you knew me deep down inside, you wouldn't invest in this because there's nothing to invest in here, right? But I was told to do things like put one foot in front of the other, drink a cup of coffee, go to a meeting. If you're stressed out, eat a turkey sandwich, okay? It's not that deep. Sit down and stay still and read your book for five minutes, okay? Go to bed at a reasonable hour and get up at a reasonable hour. Call your sponsor every day. Be of service to other people. Stay out of other people's petty drama. And day by day, I did that. And day by day, what I realized was that peace and that serenity that I wasn't able to have, that I didn't even know existed, started coming back. Why? Because I didn't have to lie to people anymore. I didn't have to tell people that I was one place when I was another place. I didn't have to make up stories to get out of things, right? That was huge peace of mind. So I, I think first came peace of mind before came peace and serenity. Then people started saying to me, like, I've noticed a change in you. You physically look better. You look better. You know, you seem better. I'm happy for you. You seem happier. And I was like, do I? And I started realizing I am happier. Not 100%, but, you know, things are getting better. And over time, things started to change, okay? But had I stayed in that negativity and that chaos, which was so comfortable to me, and it was so comfortable to me. And let me tell you a little story. There were four years that I did not go to meetings. I tell this on here a lot. There were four years I didn't go to meetings. And when I came back, I started going to a lot of meetings at a club, right? And any clubhouse in recovery, y'all know this, has a lot of drama, okay? There's people dating people here and people knowing this person and whatever, okay. And I was telling my friend Tanya one night, like we were going to our home group meeting and I was like, oh my God, and this person, that, and this person, this, and this person, that. And she goes, you need to stop going there. And I said, what? No, Tanya Jean. No, I love it. They all know me there and everything. She goes, you need to stop going there or you need to stay out of the negativity. You need to just go to the meeting. You need to stop afterwards and say hi to everybody and then leave. Or you don't need to be standing out there for 45 minutes to an hour telling everybody's gossip after a meeting. You don't need to be standing out there taking it all in. It's not healthy for you. That's not what sobriety is about, especially with you coming back in. And I really thought about it and I thought she's right, you know. And at that point was when I started changing up some of my meetings and I started going to other places because what I realized was, I don't know that I had the capability of it because I crave chaos. I crave drama as a distraction, okay, from having to deal with my own crap. So if anybody out there is focused on negativity and focusing on drama and focusing on negativity, I hate to tell you, but the truth is, it's because you don't want to deal with your own issues. And the reality is, we all know what our own issues are. We all know what we need to work on deep down inside. We just don't want to tell anybody. We don't want to work on it because it's too scary to us, right? But until we do, we're not going to get any better. So choose chaos or choose serenity. But today, I want serenity and peace in my life because I have an amazing life. And I want that for all of you out there too. So anyway, I hope that uh, was an enjoyable video for you guys for my first recovery and addiction video. I really had fun doing that. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.